Wheatley and this is uh, episode 187 of the Weekly Weekly Podcast. Uh, thank you very much for joining us wherever you are doing so on YouTube and all that. Um, uh, our link is in the description, by the way, for buying me a coffee. I still am not comfortable with that, but people told me to do it. But anyway, here we are. Um, big thanks to Bianca for coming on last week. Um, we talked about... Uh, uh, Bianca talked very openly about uh, transgender... Um, you know, when she was young and she was in Brazil and her mom kind of saw that there might be something there and led Bianca down this road that she went to. And then going into becoming a, a content creator, which we'll go into in a minute. Uh, but even like uh, Bianca talking about, you know, uh, becoming an adult entertainer and stuff like that. And she was very open about it. And it was a fascinating chat. And she's, uh, yeah, she was a great guest. So go check it out if you haven't done so already. But our guest today is a radio presenter and tri- tri-channel contributor, Kellyanne Brennan. How are you doing, Kellyanne? Hi. Sorry, I need to listen back to that in that last episode. That sounds fascinating. It was. It was. It was incredible. Um, uh, Bianca's actually from where I am from. Well, yeah. she lives, I should say, and uh, you know, I got to meet her before and stuff like that, and um, it was great for her to come on. But uh, I said to her before. Um, I said, I think I said it on the podcast as well that I was very wary about, you know, tripping up or, or making her feel uncomfortable in the questions. And she couldn't have been more open and honest about everything. And she was, uh, yeah, it was it was a brilliant conversation. So what I really a enjoyed it. What a I'm legend. Gonna, I'm going to listen back to that one. Do, it's, but it's listen. sold me on that. I, listen, Callianne, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you doing, my darling? I'm very good. I'm thrilled to have you on um as we get into the the conversation people will realize how i uh became aware of you and got to see some of the content you're on and stuff like that um but more importantly we always get uh the first two questions and the first one is always uh can you give us a short history of your upbringing please my upbringing is a fun one okay. um so i was very blessed to be surrounded by three siblings so there's four of us in total I grew up in Dublin born and bred a dub gal um, and I have my older sisters who are twins um, myself and my brother now technically mathematically it, 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 middle child syndrome shouldn't really mm. like be applicable to me however I claim that yeah even though you know they're twins, but I'm just like, do you know, I'm still in the middle. I'm mm. still in the middle. There's only like a five minute difference between the two of you. Um, but I had such a gorgeous um, upbringing where, you know, my my mom and dad were together for 18 years and we had so many amazing memories. We grew up going on adventures, going on different um, days out. Our, our childhood was filled with toys and making games and I think having my siblings around definitely um, solidified my love for creativity because Mm. one, you're fighting for attention. And as a middle child, um, we're constantly fighting for attention. But we also had a very gorgeous upbringing where we had um, to be together, create ideas together, create games together. And I've I'll always to this day, I think my siblings included will always say, we're so happy we had each other because if we didn't have friends around or anything around, we were always delighted to be in each other's company. We were playing games like hours upon hours spent sp- playing Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, James Bond, you know, Race Car Rush was our favorite one, like Chico books. And that's where I think my love definitely flourished into creativity and, you know, YouTube and, and media in that format. But my dad, I'd say, would definitely have been my biggest, um, I would say role model when it when it came to getting into media and what I currently do now. He um he ran Beatles Ireland. He's a big Beatles the, the band, not of the insect, but um the Beatles the the band. He's a he's a big fan of them, and he was constantly brought on air to contribute to anniversaries or or occasions or anything like that. So I, I grew up in a household where Dad was always in the media, always on radio, always talking, and he had a very good um way of approaching people and bringing the interest of whatever the topic was to fruition and enjoying a conversation and I definitely fell in love with how my dad was able to conduct those conversations Mm. and that's where and I talk to a door 
I'm not gonna lie. I will talk to a door and have the best conversations. I highly recommend Oak. They are phenomenal characters. <laughs> <laughs> but that was basically it. Like all oh, media, creativity, love, fun, manners, empathy, understanding was always something that that I grew up with. And I'm so thankful for the upbringing that I had and and my family for always being around to manage my cray crayness. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, like. I'm on a kind of a self-imposed kind of ban from talking about the Beatles because I talk about them too much on the podcast. I will um, talk to you all day about them. You see, this is this <laughs> this is what happens because when I do meet someone who who loves the Beatles or are into the Beatles, the enthusiasm obviously gets a bit stoked, and then yeah. I I I kind of you get you gravitate towards it and you want to have a chat about it, and because I talk so much about it, people are like. The odd time I do a solo music episode or something, and I was like, just don't mention the Beatles. Do other stuff, just don't do the Beatles. So it's kind of, you know, self-imposed. But look. You and my dad, both. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 hard work, you know. I also find it interesting that middle child syndrome, something that I also am, uh, you know, suffering from uh, all these years. And it, it is it's a tough thing. thing. Yeah, it's, it's the thing. We need a group chat, okay? Yeah, we, we do. We need a group chat where we could. We, all we want to do is constantly vent. So yeah. could you imagine a space? The voice notes would be Liddy. Oh God, the voice notes. Um, <laughs> Everyone but, demanding attention in that. <laughs> so in in all that, I suppose, Kalyan, um, you know that the upbringing seems beautiful thing, and you know having your 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 parents and and your siblings and stuff like that, um. When did you first come aware of mental health? Because it's one of those things that I've had this question so to all the people who've been on, and it's such a varying answer, really. To be completely honest with you, I've always been aware of it. Um, my mom is a very intuitive individual, and she studied psychology and counselling. Mm. And growing up, um, you know, you get household situations, you get family dynamics, you get everything like that. But it was always something that was um, taught to us to understand our emotions and understand what they're actually trying to communicate and what, you know, frustration is and what sadness is and how is that emotion attached to a certain action that's happening that might be causing this. So it was something that I was always hyper aware of and it's something that I've utilized when it comes to interviewing or talking to people. But being you know individually aware of my mental health was something that I didn't really um become aware of until I was about 18 or 19 when um I kind of you would you would feel that you know my mom and dad separated when I was 12 and I was going from primary school into secondary school that would have been a key transition of like oh you should like mental health might be here it wasn't really there because I had my siblings around like I said we are so close I never felt the impact really of my mom and dad separation really until it came to when I was like 18 or 19. And then I was like, oh, this is definitely something that, you know, I might not have realized has kind of impacted me. And I think as well, I struggled massively, massively with my appearance. I had like so, so many years because I, I really I have an issue with self-loathing like I really mm -hmm. would put a lot of pressure on myself and it's something God bless my mom has struggled with for for a long time because I'd idolize my twin sisters they are two in my opinion two of the most beautiful inside and out human beings and when there's two of them I'm, I'm out I'm out of the game yeah. like they're both both fantastic inside and out and mm -hmm. I would always compare myself to them I was I grew up, I was, I, I was, I was in my mind, this is what I'm saying. I'm not now looking back, but in my mind, I was chubbier. I wasn't less attractive. I was less um, outgoing. I wasn't picked for the games. I, I, I definitely struggled with that. And going into college, I was hyper aware of how I looked and presented because I was going into a presenting college and media college role and self-consciousness really came into my mind. And I struggled big time with that. I struggled really, really hard with how I was to present myself, how I was to go about it. And managing it is a very difficult thing when you have gorgeous, kind people saying, but don't be feeling that way. Like yeah. You don't have to feel that way. And you would get mad at yourself because I'm like, look at me. I have I have this, I have that. I have gratitude needed to come into it. But I feel that was the first time I was where I was like, okay, I'm really low right now. I'm really, really low right now. Um, and that was one 
that I had to learn of, okay, I need to manage myself a little bit better, but we didn't have, it was only in the last little while, I'm sure you'd agree that we've, we've been introduced to techniques, books, Mm -hmm. um, philosophy, understanding what the route might be. However, this year, I like, I kind of, I I was, again, I surrounded myself with people, like minded people, which definitely helped me through that mental struggle that I had. I am, I'm building up my own self-confidence and embracing, you know, the beautiful body that was blessed upon me that was working perfectly and no issues except for asthma we we struggle on our hikes but that's fine we use our inhaler it's all yeah. good and um, but it was only in the last year this year has been my biggest mental health mm. struggle for sure for sure I, I came out of a, a very um unfortunate relationship I had to change up my whole life plan my whole career my whole everything um and it kind of rocked me mentally because I was coming out of a situation that had been um, managed for me for quite some period of time. And once you kind of build up the courage to realize that this isn't healthy for you, this is only damaging you, is a very terrifying realization to do. So my goodness, it's been about my poor family dealing with the ups and downs of that has been something. And I'm still going through, I'm still learning it, you know, but thankfully we have therapy and thankfully we have friends and thankfully we have people who who have gone through something similar and, yeah, talking helps. Yeah, I think <laughs> for sure. The, you know the thing about it, like it's the kind of crushing thing about you know appearances and how we feel about ourselves is always the idea that you know we'll have, like you said, beautiful people and lovely people telling us, you know, oh, you, you look great, don't worry, and they're and they're meaning it. You know, it's not like just like saying it for the sake of saying it, but they definitely mean it. But no matter how many times they'll tell you, it won't sink in. You know, it, it's like. It's trying to fix yourself first before you can kind of receive those compliments. And that, that's it? The, yeah. And that's very difficult. And, you know, therapy is is a great thing. And I always talk about it again on this podcast about therapy and stuff like that. Uh, the idea of uh, struggling with with body image and, and you know, uh, things like that for you, who is someone who is in the media, you know, and going in front of cameras, we talk like I spoke last week to Bianca about it. And I'm saying to Bianca, I have to I don't like taking photos for the for the podcast and she's taking her clothes off in front of the camera and it, she's fine with it and and, and there's yeah. no and the differences that we can have in that how do yeah. you deal with it like now is it that like obviously you're talking about therapy and stuff has helped me how can you you know go in front of a camera for the tri channel for example and and feel kind of comfortable with it now oh well let me tell you darling <laughs> when i first started on the tri channel which um, has only grown massively in the last little while when I first started that was not a good time for for I was not expecting so if we if we actually dissect what the tri channel is it is, mm-hmm. it is a YouTube platform has a million subscribers it is a huge fan following the tri fans are an amazing bunch of creative loving people but also there's some keyboard warriors in there too mm-hmm. and when I first arrived and I will say I arrived on the tri channel um, I was going through that phase of figuring out my style my fashion my my approach my me I was trying to, I was going through literally that key transition of what is me what suits me and it was a very interesting time to join the tri channel because the commons were very honest. I mm. don't like this. I don't like that. She's great for this. She's great for that. And then, ironically enough, once I started to figure me out externally from from the tri channel as a separate entity, when I would go back on um, and shoot some f- shoot uh, with the with the channel, and I was more comfortable in me, the comments reciprocated just mm. like that. The comments were, like, "She looks glowing. She's so happy. She's so yeah. this. She's so that." And that solidified to me. Okay. The, the gut feeling that I felt over the direction I wanted to go is is working, which was really nice to feel and to, and to read. But I, to be honest, I love fashion. Mm. And one thing I've grown up with is my mom understanding my struggle with my body image. And like she would say, you have my body. You you like this is this is the body, your mom's side of the family or like we've got this. Um, and she always had an had awareness on how to dress and how to present this body shape. So. I kind of went into that and found a new love for fa- sorry my dog is here trying He's to say right. hello. He's welcome, Alex. <laughs> sorry, that's Bailey. Um, I'm going to shimmy him out because he will join this. That's soon. all right. Can... You go for it. You go for it. Come on, come on, itch a baby. Come on, itch, 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 itch. Bailey comes Good in. Boy. I think Good that's boy. Uh, the fourth appearance by a dog on the podcast. He loves. 
Let's see. Um, but fashion, once I yeah. figured out my fashion and once I figured out what I feel comfortable in, clothes to me is my comfort. Um, as long as I like my cup of tea and my clothes, those are my things that I love. Um, and it's definitely one of those ones that I, I brought to the <laughs> Yeah, I, I th- but this is the thing about, you know, I suppose when when I watch the Trudge Channel, every, every episode that comes out and you know, for the most part, I would say that there is a very supportive kind of community, you know, that the, the, the comments are, are for the most part, there's always going to be, you know, one or two, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we were saying before you, um, or sorry, before I hit record, the idea that it's a group of people and somehow, and I do get annoyed by some people, I, I, you know, we all do like, but I probably do over the top in a sense, but nobody on it is annoying somehow, first of all, but when you started on it, now we, if people are you have you know watch this podcast or listen to his podcast for a long time now, they will know Claire who came on a, a long time ago. Queen, uh, yes, absolutely brilliant, and the, the that's a brilliant thing of the diversity of personalities on it, because if Claire really doesn't like something, you know it. Like there's no there's no hiding it. But what what I was drawn to with you in particular, Kellyanne, uh-huh. when, you, when, you, when you started on it was your enthusiasm. I know for things. you were you were. Your willingness to tr- obviously try, you know, the pun intentional, <laughs> try anything w- was brilliant. But like, I, I don't, I, when I see, I try and think myself in some of those positions and immediately I can't do that. Like, But you will yeah. just go head first into everything, which is amazing. But that kind of infectious positivity, um, when did that come about? Because that's something that I guess you can't really fake. It's, it's too, yeah. it's too real to kind of fake, if you know what I mean. Thank you. So, that's such a nice way of putting it. And thank you so much for noticing that because it's true. I love life. I yeah. love things. I love finding new things. I love adventures. I love the little things that life gives. And th- again, it's 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 my dad, it's my mom, it's my sisters, mm. the creative side. Because we grew up in such a humbling household where you know you'd work for something and you received it, that gratitude is instilled in in you from such a young age when you're going through a very serious cognitive development phase mm. of your life. And I think for me it was something that we loved. We loved where my dad like look at this flower like this was just yeah. for the bees and oh my god you're going to try this new ice pop my dad worked for hhb so we got loads oh, of new ice cream nice. flavors so i'd be like i'm so excited to try this this is amazing and i think that love for new things and you know i'm always about don't knock it till you try it mm. never read never judge a book by its cover you know everyone has their thing if everyone's having a if, if, if they're angry they're probably just having a bad day so it's always just just look for the element of happiness in mm. each day it, it, like life is heavy you know we can dwell on it we can continue on it but if you find that little element of happiness in something it kind of just automatically picks up your mood mm. so when even if I'm about to eat eat an insect I don't want to like look you know this is what in some culture this is what they have to do this is what they're eating you should be so lucky that we're going to try this today yeah. I'm dreading it but let's give it a go <laughs> and it's amazing because when I uh, I asked you to come on last week and you were straight away got back to me and said you'd love to come on and I was thrilled by it and then I watched Friday's video which um was uh, tacos and I think it was the <laughs> first time I saw you that you didn't like something and I was like right. you were like I will say you were being as polite as possible about not liking something but at the same time criticism <laughs> it, constructive criticism is the is the is the best way we could you know do it but I think it was interesting to see. That side of things, because I like to, I prefer the food ones because I don't drink alcohol anymore. I gave it up years and years ago. So I think to myself, well, I'll never get to like try that. You know, there's not a possibility. So I think, but when the food comes on, I'm always like, oh, brilliant. Like, I'll I'll try this. And you have some, like the Korean food seems to be such a hit on that. Every time Korean food is on it. Matt, Matt. Have you tried we love it. Yeah. We have it. We've got loads of it, and, and like the it's, fans go wild for it because it's such a you. It's such a unique. It's yeah. such a unique taste. It's such a unique flavor. Such a unique way of presenting the food as well at the same time. But no, like that's the thing. Like I won't if something I, I like really dislike. 
I don't want it's kind of like it's an Irish thing as well at the same time like do you know like if you go to your granny's house or something and they cook a lovely meal and it's mm. dire it's yeah. there's no flavour there's not a herb in sight and it's just plain but you're like thank you so much this is so lovely because you know it's their yeah. thing it's whatever it is so like I don't want to knock anything either but if I don't like something like I have like Ugh. no those <laughs> And that, but that and, and that was the bizarre thing. I've I've seen you try stuff that was well, I suppose should have been worse reaction. But when it was tacos, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Must yeah, be I, t- was, I think it was just just one of those ones that just didn't click. Didn't sit didn't, well. That's all right. We, look, we click. we live and learn. Like it's one of we those live things. Live and learn. But so <laughs> she loves tacos. <laughs> and I actually do quite like tacos. But but you know, it's it depends on the day, doesn't it? Like as well, it's it not all. Yeah. It does. It really does. Because some days you might have had a feed or whatever and you're going yeah. and you're trying these things. You're like, oh, okay, I was not preparing for tacos today. I, I saw it. E- there was an episode of Dermot and I think he said he had like a full feed, you know, that day. And then he literally ate everything again and he was almost sick. But it might have been the taco one, actually, strange Could enough. But, but it's like if people haven't um, watched the Try channel on YouTube, definitely go over and watch it. A fantastic group of people trying different things that maybe we will like take a recommendation from and go and try yourself or maybe we'll never get the chance and we get to see other people squirm is there is there anything that you worry about because there's the infamous durian fruit that's been on it look i've had it yeah I've had it. i don't get the negative hype if i'm to be honest <laughs> like it's not great it's kind of like really stale gone off communion bread or like okay. you're gone off cereal you're not you you you're, you, you have in the press you have a bowl, you're kind of craving, and then all of a sudden that tastes wrong. Yeah. And that's kind of what it is. It, it's just, uh, but just extra like fluff or something around it. I don't know. Like it's not an enjoyable experience, but yeah. I've had worse. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. So I'll let those who have the phobia around it take, take that one. I definitely, mine is, I can't even pronounce them. I really, really dislike the moat, the mochi, the little ball. Oh, yeah. Things. Yeah. Frozen, great as is. Can't stand the texture. Can't stand uh, it. See, it's the, like it does something to the senses. The texture <laughs> is is very underestimated in food. I think I am. Um, I've spoken about bananas before. They're they're my biggest fear. They're, I hate everything about them. I just, I can't even look at one. And I work I work in a gym, and the other coaches bring in bananas ah, and put them on the desk, and it just oh. Nice. Oh, they are just the worst things. And there's I mean, ju- I can see it. I can, I get it. You, you get it because it's like even if people like them, you have to understand like the the texture's weird. It's so so bizarre. So bizarre. Like when you peel the skin, it's got those little bits that stay on it, and and it's just. I ah, look. I I'm not going to get into it now. Don't, this isn't I can about feel it from you. I can feel it. Yeah. From, let's talk about it. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? Is it? Actually, this is actually an ideal time to come into the question I wanted to ask you about with regards to, um. Self care, something that's very important, and maybe a lot of people aren't on top of their self care. How do you uh, look after yourself? Oh, do you know what? That's a stunning question. I love self care. I have prioritized that in my life because I don't know if you know, but being in the media, when you're starting out, there's a lot of yeses when they probably should have been no's. Mm. And you put yourself and your body through a lot to prove your worth, to prove who you are, to prove what you can do, to prove that you are worthy of this job or this 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 um role or whatever it might be and you let yourself go because you're working mad hours and you're you're pushing yourself so you're giving yourself the most um the biggest chance basically to to succeed and it's a it's a graft and it's grind and it's a hustle but you let yourself go and I've learned in the last year especially since the the situation that I had to leave um that I let myself myself go because my mental health in that situation for the last two years was on overdrive, trying to manage every single thing, every single day in my head to kind of like survive. And once I got myself out of that, I realized I let me go and like the things that I enjoy. And that is sketching. Self-care is sketching. It's not just your skincare, it's sketching. It's mm-hmm. going on my hikes. Um, it's seeing my friends for the coffees and making time for them because I would always say no. It is so important to make time for those genuine friends that actually care about you just as much as you care about them. And 
if you have something to talk about, they're listening, but they're also they're giving the advice or they're giving the 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 thoughts that you might need to hear. But when it comes to f- like physical self care, I love my skincare. I love the ritual. I love helping people out with that as well. I have a whole new thing that I'm planning on doing on like the products that I enjoy to y- use oh. and doing it with my sisters as well. And just having that girly time, I think, is so important. I listen to. I'm obsessed with orchestra music Hans Zimmer is bay to me like I will in my room blasting some hands and I'm doing my skincare routine thinking I'm in like interstellar or something and I'm just living my best musical life and that to me an hour 40 minutes of that I am on cloud nine you I might as well have gone on away on a holiday for a year but that's self-care and then getting into a sketching situation afterwards bliss 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 that's beautiful things sit there and are, are you you were at Elevate Fit Fest at the weekend? How was, was that so for you? Fun. Was amazing, it? amazing. I didn't. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I go to the gym. I'm a, I'm a religious gym goer. I love I love going to the gym. I love heavyweight sessions. And I I've only recently got into. And I feel bougie saying this, but the yoga, she oh. yogas now, and I wow. didn't. I I have terrible balance, terrible body coordination situations going on but I loved it and this one was a new one that I got to work on so I do marketing and socials as well so I got to work on this one but also like dive into the classes and and meet these amazing teachers and guest speakers and listen in on talks with people talking about mental health talking about serious topics but also talking about health and nutrition and Mm -hmm. how to mind your body it's fascinating I was like, my page was through the roof. I said, no, it's galore. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, um, you know, when I see people in those environments that they're clearly comfortable in and also really enjoying. And I think when when I saw, obviously you see little clips from your Instagram and like, you're really getting involved. The group is doing their thing and like, you're getting involved and kind of shouting encouragement. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like just... When people were coming off their talks, I was like, you think, I have no idea who they are. They have like a million <laughs> followers. I'm like, that was awesome, <laughs> But that, that's like, we have, those people in the gym and I love them because I'm like, as a coach, I try to be like that, but I'm not like, I think I'm a good motivator, but the enthusiasm that other people can bring in their, in their motivation when they're in that actual coaching session, you know, they're actually doing the workout. It's hard when I'm not to, I do the workouts in the morning, but in the evening when I'm taking the classes that it's hard to, you know, motivate them as you should, because I'm not doing the movements that they're doing. But when I see others do it, I love it. Like, cause it's, Because some people just need that little bit of uh, boost, you know, that kind I, of this sarcasm and humor is yeah. my is my vernacular. Like I just can't I can never be I'm a serious person. I can speak serious topics. But for me, happiness and and sarcasm and, and humor is my language. Mm. And I think if we're in a terrible situation where we're, we can't breathe, we're sweating, we're in bits, laugh at it. Like, yeah. look at the state of us we're in bits but we're doing great our body's gonna love this afterwards and look at those abs popping out girl well done i'm like this hype queen and i can't help it <laughs> yeah but like that's you like you know and that's the point you know the kind of thing of um i think a lot of people hold that back and they think you know some people overthink those kind of things that they think how people will see them but if that's how you are in your nature i think it's a beautiful thing to be able to share it with other people and kind of give them that little boost i think it's i think it's great um with with regards to something like RT Pulse, I know yeah. you do uh, work on that as well. Like, how did that come about? So I do, there's two parts to RT that I do. So I am obviously radio presenter for RT Pulse, which I love. And then I'm the station voice for 2FM. So mm-hmm. I do. So when you're listening to 2FM, I'm the one that's saying, you know, Dear and Donegal and Carl on 2FM. So I do, I'm the station voice as well. So I started out on RT Pulse because I love music I love Irish artists I love up and coming Irish artists I think it's um so important to highlight in ground talent that we have here which is phenomenal and the, the the level of quality production like everything is just so organically beautiful that Irish artists do and sometimes they don't have a stepping stone um mm. and Pulse is that stepping stone for them to get on like a n- nationwide radio it's a dab station it's not on frequency but I kind of love that as well because it, it levels out the nervousness so I would always try to get people in for interviews to give them that studio um mm. interview experience so for two years, I was like every Friday I was interviewing some new artists and I'd like DMing, wrecking their heads. When I like, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me, come in. 
and I loved it I just love talking to people I love learning about people music from themselves to like family to whatever and I always had this thing and I'll bring it with me no matter what is I'll always have a snack for them so I'll always find out before they come in for me about like, what's your favorite snack and I'll have it for them as like a token of thank you because most of the time they're coming in at their own kindness and, and yeah. free time to, to do these things and so it's just a token of, of thank you but I just love learning about it and I've been doing that for ages and then when COVID hit we set up our own radio station because we couldn't go in and call Quarantine FM and I have never interviewed as many people in my entire life because no one had nothing better to do so yeah. I was getting them all I was like you can't say no to me <laughs> <laughs> talk to me today um and I love I loved that and from being in there then you know people obviously appreciated my voice and said you know what we'll have you on for 2FM as the station voice so myself that and January are the three voices that you hear 24 7 on 2FM I do apologize <laughs> no I think it's great I, I love it I think that when you were because obviously with that now with your work you're obviously keeping on top of the kind of current music and the and the music that's still coming out and I think I've definitely fallen well away from the 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 kind of more um modern music and I kind of go back to the same stuff that I've always yeah. liked you know when you were growing up though what, what kind of music apart from the Beatles were you into we had we had the mall we right. had we I had ABBA we had the Rolling Stones. We had the Beatles on repeat. We had um, Beach Boys. We had I. Uh, my one of my favorite festivals is Forever Young Festival. Mm. Linda does a phenomenal job with that every year, and I live a carousel through that. I was born in the wrong decade. Like Tiffany was my queen. I, I just loved all the Queen. I love Queen. Like that's yeah. my that's my bubble. That's my my decade. And but ABBA especially was was, what was is the songs that I would listen to. But my dad definitely instilled the love for music because we'd be driving on these long drives on our adventures. We'd be going to the beach or whatever. And it was old days where it'd be either CDs or tapes in the car. Mm -hmm. So we'd get a CD. And I can tell you to this day, if the start of, you know, Beach Boys comes on, it's like, da -da -da -da, go surfing. And I'll be instantly and my dad would stop it and restart it again. So we'd get hyped for the song yeah. to come again. So it was just always building that adrenaline, that excitement. And it just, that's where the love for music came from. But my dad was always looking, listen to this new artist, listen to this yeah. person. Oh, this came, this came in fr from this. Like he'd get press releases as well from a lot of, um, from a lot of PR agencies and a lot of um, music um, labels as well for him to have a listen and, and kind of review because he was very honest with his feedback. So I, we'd get to listen to these. Like, what do you think of them? I'm like, ah. <laughs> we need we need a little bit more, you know, drum roll in there with yeah. the electric guitar. <laughs> what, what, what a way to be introduced to, like, the list that you named out there of incredible artists, you know, that that kind of introduction to music. And it's so important, like when you are young and especially for you, what, what you're doing now, like did that kind of introduction obviously stands for you now. And you can note those kind of maybe in, in, in modern and newer music, you're like the differences like there is a huge jump every I suppose every decade or so that when the generation changes and then we go into the next one. And maybe that's where I get left behind, because apparently this is. I don't know. When you're 26 years of age, that's when you stop listening to new music, apparently. Well, I am 28, and let me tell you, I am always on the new Tune Skis app, seeing what's going on. I'm Shazam, and like, there's no tomorrow. I was in Dunn Stores the other day, and I heard a song, and I was like, hang on, ma'am, the bread can wait. Got it, as you were, proceed. <laughs> I, I, like, I had uh, I had Shazam, I couldn't work it. Like, how can you not work Shazam? People are going to, I don't know, maybe I was standing too far, but I'm, I'm one of those people that, like, will hear the new music now in the gym. You know, because people yeah. obviously put on CDs and stuff and, and uh, Spotify and things like that. So I do say, but I don't or know. If I you... have a talent. It's like a trick with my sisters. We always play if it's this DJ set. My talent is just from a chord or a beat. I'll know the song that's coming up next. She blows her oh. mind every time. We were at um, All Together Night Festival. We were at a DJ set. I was like, this song's coming up next. And then after that, it's going to be this song. And she's just like, how do you know this? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> And like, do you do you like festivals? Do you enjoy the the whole? Love experience? Them. Do you? I love the chaos. I love the I love the flaffle. I love the, <laughs> you know that I just you know the best way I've ever described it to someone is I love how we have our nine to five version of ourselves. We're yeah. very serious. We're very you know do this do that. As soon as your totos hits the muddy grass of a festival, all of a sudden. The inner Sasha Fierce takes over. You are a whole other person. Yeah, that yeah. nine to five person had left the building and you're taking over. And I just love seeing how people can just be their authentic self at a festival. Maybe just a little bit more Lula and intoxicated, but um, 
always a good time. I don't like, I don't know if I, I went to, I've never been to a festival where I've stayed. So I went to like, remember um, Oxygen was called um, Witness. Yeah. Back, yeah. In, back in the day. Yeah. Long time. And I was, I remember going there. Uh, my uh, girlfriend at the time bought me a, a ticket to it just for one day appearance. So it was on the Sunday. And I remember the fact that Saturday had been a washout. So there's mud everywhere and mud all over the yeah. screens and stuff. I don't think I leave that nine to five. I think I, I think I remain in that nine to five all the way through to to bedtime because I was kind of there and I was twenty at the time, maybe you know nineteen, yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I, I just couldn't like I really enjoyed the bands and the music and that side of things, but I just couldn't like let myself do what the other people were doing, like throwing themselves into the mud and. Yeah, no. I, was, I couldn't get into no. it as much I wouldn't be that I'm here for the atmosphere for the possibilities yeah. for me I love that word possibilities because yeah. when I go to a festival the possibility of interviewing this person the possibility mm. of networking the possibility of having fun or trying new food making new friends making memories I'm all about making memories so that 80 year old Kalyan can look back on me like well bloody don't you actually did that yeah. do you know so like I can have a nine to five every day but like going out and letting my hair down and just being me is something that is only going to happen for a certain amount of, of years or whatever it is so I might as well take it yeah. now while I can and just enjoy it and go full throttle, especially when opportunities are allowing me to. Thankfully, radio does, you know, different brand opportunities allows me to do that as well. And I get to be creative and have fun and just, you know, really delve into that. But don't get me wrong, when the rain comes down and the mud is out, yeah. there might be, there's an inner tear. There won't yeah. be a physical tear. There's an inner tear. And I'm like, oh, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this. <laughs> Did it have to do that? But do have to, Ireland, do you have to rain 24 bleeding seven? <laughs> it is it, it, like, you know, and that is the disruptive side of, of kind of festivals in Ireland. I, I like I want to talk to you a little bit about fashion again, because I, what I wanted to kind of say about the fashion side of things, and I'm not someone who kind of, I suppose, follows the fashion trends and things like that. It's just to me, I like, you know, I put on a T-shirt and a pair of jeans and I'm, and I'm, I'm comfortable. You. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a comfort thing. And I have a friend who's really, really into fashion, you know, and we kind of discuss the idea of like we still both care of, of how we look, but yeah, just maybe he's more flamboyant in his choices. And what I what I noted with you, Kalyan, if you don't mind me saying, is like you look comfortable in what you're wearing. Yeah. In that, you know, the choice that you've made is the right choice. Uh, often you see people who look uncomfortable. In yeah. in both like how they maybe how they feel in it the the fact that it's too tight here but they're always constantly worried that it's too tight yeah. here and it's not the choice that you know um it's a choice they made kind of for looks rather than comfort you know built you know what comfort. that's a really really interesting um observation and well done noticing that because it's definitely something I can only speak from 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 my thing my friends and people who I'm around. And trends in fashion is definitely something that implements, you know, regrettable choices. Don't get me wrong. If I look back on my old, if I was to ever get the access to my old Bebo page, my good God, lock up your family. We No one needs to see this. And I do feel that thankfully, and I mean this like genuinely, I'm so appreciative of the kind of culture we're, we're getting into now where, you know, you as you is just perfect. Yeah. Um, as instead of having to feel because when we look back in time and fashion is something I've really delved into. And I, I I look at the psychology behind fashion as well. Like I don't just appreciate clothes. Like there is a science to it as well. Um, and body shapes and stuff, but trends are something that can also, you know, um, be a negative for certain mm. people because they're not fitted for certain body types. And that's yep. what we're not taking into like into the maths of this whole thing is a trend is a trend for a certain body type, not an all body type. And exactly. Thank you so much for noticing that. Like I dress for my body type, mm. but I work it so that, you know, I feel comfortable and I can breathe. And my biggest thing is like, as soon as I eat, I bloat and I look about like 10 months pregnant. So I always like kind of, but every woman, like that's just like how yeah. the body, that's just how the or insides work, you know, most of the time when we're, when we're humans. And um, so like, I've learned to um, make my clothes work for me rather than me work for a trend. Yeah. And by that I'll set my own trend. And if, you know, people don't like that, that's the, that's a them issue. Yeah. You know, you wear what makes you happy, feel comfortable in that is your, like it's a, it's a, you're a canvas 
and whatever way you want to paint yourself in the morning you paint away like mm. have full creative flow on it but be comfortable and don't feel like you have to be a sheep because we're very very easily drawn into oh they're doing it so we do it but you know your way is just as perfect as that way you don't need to just because you know she has it like that just put your own flair on it if you don't yeah. want to wear the tight skinny jeans put on your flares it will look just as gorgeous <laughs> exactly um do you know and it's just finding the fit that fits you as in you yeah and i love that and anytime i'm I, like a lot of my friends are so gorgeous now and they're and they're reaching out to me because i do get ready with me videos and you know people are like you've always dressed well but i didn't realize that like you can do this and you can do that and you can mix and match with that and mm. use what's in your wardrobe is something i always say like you always have what you need just dig it out and you know i'm like well you have a different body shape to me but so this will go better with that don't don't wear it the way i'm wearing it i think this would look better for you because you've got this color hair you've got this you've got boobs you've got mm. like this like you've got that you know like let's work around this and the same with the lads like I've just made yeah. lads they're like how do I dress and I'm like let me pick your color code yeah. <laughs> but it's it, you know and, and kind of an extension of that then is and I had a big problem with this when I started talking about it because obviously I came on uh, and started this podcast through for mental health, you know, talk about mental health and that was fine and I was never I had never any problems talking about my mental health and anybody who wants to talk to me about it more than welcome but I had a problem with like how I felt like how my body was and, I, and like when I started talking about it on here people were kind of a bit shocked by you know the admission because you know I'm six foot two and I'm pretty trim and, and I'm you know people would suggest oh you're grand like we said earlier on you look grand like you know but I didn't kind of notice how wary I was of you know when we were getting changed in the office or whatever, just the coaches, I wouldn't take my my T-shirt off. Or when I do jujitsu, I have to wear like a, you know, the rash guard. So they're skin yeah. tight. So there's little bulges here and there. Like, and I know there's, it's, uh, you know, in the front of my mind, I know it's not a big deal. But in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about that. And I think that's another thing, like, interesting thing you said about trends as well. That's another thing of how people should be wearing certain clothes at certain times. And we will, even if we're uncomfortable with it, we'll still wear it because it's supposed to be worn. You know, like yeah. this is what we should be wearing. And I've always found that as, when, well, since I started talking about like kind of body issues and we had people on talking about body dysmorphia and stuff like that, that how how deep that well goes, like mm. it's such a big. It's instilled in us since we're babies. Yeah. You know, that's something like that's just not a new thing that's happened yesterday. This is something that is been instilled in us since we are born it is how consumerism works it is how the media operates it is how we get like it's it's like without getting too deep it's the whole Freud how the mind works how psychology works and how it embeds into our noggin so that we are no longer able to actually make our mm -hmm. own decisions on what we want and that's why I'm saying this new wave that's coming in now we are accepting our bodies. We are accepting the fashion that we enjoy. Don't get me wrong. There's pressure and there's peer pressure mm -hmm. as well to, to, oh, well, like you're part of this group. This is what we're kind of wearing at a younger age. And that was something I always felt. I did not suit the clothes that I was wearing back then because it was not my body type. Mm -hmm. But my best friend who was six foot something, a tiny little figurine person did did suit them yeah. um whereas now i would any young person or any 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 person that comes up and asks me about you know i don't know if this will look well for me i'm like it won't look yeah. well on you so this is this is you have to remember that this is your beautiful body that you've been blessed with and you want to be comfortable but you also want to be fashionable mm -hmm. and you, you like we love fashion if you love fashion let fashion work for you and enjoy it and self-conscious body imagery is something that i will fight till the day I die because mm -hmm. it was so impactful on me in a negative way that I will never let it impact anyone and come across in a negative way whatsoever if someone turns around to me and says I don't like my love paddles well, I'm like well I love them and they love you yeah. and they've got you from A to B and if you're not if they're not working with you right now let's see how we can work with them yeah. and like do you know like you, you've you been given this vessel this beautiful vessel so let that guide you and you just work with it to make you the happiest version of you and if fashion is that way to do it fantastic let's go shopping let's see what you you have let's put something gorgeous together and I think it's just you're you're the navigator of that completely and external entities are exactly that they're external yeah. they're not you 
they're not a reflection of you. You are a reflection of you. And if someone looks twice and you think that they're looking at you, they're probably admiring your outfit. Yeah. Because bloody hell, let me tell you, I stalk the girls and the guys on the streets. And I'm like, love that outfit. Like people walking are my Pinterest boards. So I do apologize if anyone's listening and they see me gawking at them in town. I'm 100% admiring your outfit and how I can t- adapt some of your styles. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> well said. Um. Do you get a nervous or, or anxious before, you know, your broadcasts or your appearances on Try? All the time. Do you? All the time. But do you know what helps? The amazing producers yeah. are always there to greet you, give you a hug, hype you up before the shoot, kind of give you an insight of like what you're about to try. Because we never know. It's always a surprise and you never know who you're paired with. So you also are surprised on who your friend mm-hmm. is going to be with for the day. And then you just bounce off the energy. Like I said, I it, you, it could be a door I'm paired with. And I would like, we'll have the best time, Mr. Oak. Like, But always every single trier that comes on, like I jowl with and love to pieces. And everyone is so funny and so kind and so welcoming and authentic. Mm-hmm. And that is the one thing I adore and have adored since day one is that every single person is who they are. Yeah. And, you know, very honest and I love that it's just a gorgeous environment to be in no one is portraying to be something that they're not they're all there for the same reason we're here to eat and drink and have some fun yeah and um I loved that loved it so yeah. yes I did the the straight answer to that is yes I absolutely do get nervous but that only lasts for a second because the company that I'm greeted to is always with open arms and gets rid of that in no time I think and like I think that you know I'm uh not so much anxiety, but nerves is definitely okay before doing something. I mean, you it's know, it's human. yeah, and it's the idea that you you actually care about what you're about to do. I like, I have an anxiety disorder, so I like when I'm before I start recording with people. Um, we we talked before. I think I find it easier on Zoom to be honest. I used to have people in the room with me, and and yeah. it was it was grand, obviously, and most of them were kind of people from around the town. Obviously, I didn't want people to be traveling from different places and that. But I think Zoom is a little bit easier, but I still, it's the small talk at the start. You know, it's that like, the, because when it, because this is here in front of me, these pages where I have these kind of questions for you, you know, which is great. I haven't really had to touch any of them. We're just having a lovely conversation. Yeah, it's but great. I, I think, I think like that, that, that initial bit of, um, oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm so bad. At it. Like my voice even sounds different while I'm doing it. I'm like, what do you like? You know, so I think it's the, I think it's the, new people thing you know meeting new people can be quite difficult anyway can I tell you something though so I was you Mm. I was you 100 and like I kind of loved that also because we're human and that just confirms to us that we're human but before I got really into interviewing my nerves would take over so bad that like exactly that my voice would change I'd go croaky I'd I'd Mm. all of a sudden it sound like I smoked 20 cigarettes a day and the nerves would just take over but once I realized that you know, this person has a family. This person drove here like I did. This person mm-hmm. got the bus here like I did. This person eats, sleeps and drinks like, you know, the same way I do. They just happen to be a little bit more well known or they might just happen to have a different story, a different life than me. So that's exciting. Like, mm-hmm. let's learn about this person. And once you kind of categorize them into they're a human, it kind of brings that down. They're a human with a story that you're interested in, because otherwise, why would you not? Why would you have them yeah. on? And once I kind of got that into my head of like, okay, Bob is coming in today. Bob has a kid. How was, did you, did you manage to get him to crash today? And you just kind of, you just kind of bring that in. And that's yeah. your starting point. Do you know, was the traffic bad? Jesus, it was mad for me getting yeah. in here. Anyways, I'm so sorry for the chat today. We're only going to be covering these X, Y, and Z. And I was like, anytime you want to stop, like, that's kind of like how it is. I bring in something from their life into the start of the conversation. And then also we're so excited to talk to you today. And that yeah. just, it works. And it just sets the tone. And it's fabulous. God yeah, the nerves right away. That's the that's the thing. And I, I, I look, I do believe I'm I'm kind of getting better at it in that in that sense. I think I used to. You yeah, filled me. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Yeah, I was like, look at this pro. But you were. <laughs> like, to be fair, though, it's sometimes it's when the other person on the other end is in in uh, kind of comfortable already with the with meeting new people and talking to new people. Like you said, you interview people all the time. It is kind of it does help a lot. Like you feel it, the energy straight away. Yeah. Um. Speaking of, of talking to people, and, and this is something that I, I bring up a bit, and we mentioned about therapy before, but the idea of, um, you know, when you are struggling, you're having a tough time in your life, are you comfortable with bringing that up 
to other people, not therapists, therapists so much, but uh, your friends. Absolutely. I think mm. it's a, I think it's a conversation that needs to be had more, if anything. I've been to I've been to different kinds of therapy. I've been to kind of like like family mediation therapy. I've been to my own individual therapy. But the one thing that I've always kind of um, confessed is and it's there's no wrong in it is it, like ironically about the, the, the fashion is it, there has to be a fit. And even though you're going to a therapist, you might be going to the wrong therapist yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. And if you're trying to fix you and mind your head, you need to be selective on who that person is to help you navigate this very new, difficult journey that you might be, you know, forecasting for the next little while. And like when I'm speaking to my friends about something that's going on, I might not be able to communicate some elements of a conversation with them because I have a, I have a massive fear of judgment and, you know, mm-hmm that's something that I'm learning to deal with I I, I you know decision makings and stuff like that like I, I, I struggle to I don't want to burden people and I don't want people to have any sort of element of judgment on on different things so I would bring that to a therapist or whatever but at the same time like I've been through a few that haven't fit me and and guided me the way I felt like I needed to be navigated yeah. but then sometimes I, my therapist is, is, the, is the wrong person and it's actually just a conversation with my mom conversation yeah. with my dog you know and like it's it just a chat even do you know what and I the one thing is like like you said you don't drink I don't socially drink on nights out yeah. I stopped that about like four years ago but I love it because I have great conversations with people and mm. I'm like the camera on and I'm like no you're absolutely fine but some of the best therapy conversations is with the girl who's in the bathroom is with yeah. the random person out in the smoking area I don't smoke but all of a sudden I find myself out there just chit-chatting away to people <laughs> and it's just one of those things that you know you can find comfort in conversation um and the, and when it comes to those kind of deeper conversations you'll find the person that fits a conversation yeah. so there's certain things I won't bring to my friends that I'll bring to my mom or I'll bring to my therapist and vice versa kind of that way and then you kind of you know who you'd be chatting to about different things and it's handy yeah it it, it is that kind of trying to find the um you know, sometimes you won't find the answers in certain people, you know. Um, well, sometimes you won't even find the answers at all unless it's it's coming from yourselves. But that idea of like, we want to go to people to find the answers when really we're just going to get the, you know, something off our chest and stuff. And it doesn't need, they don't need to. I have friends who I go to and they don't even need to say anything back. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just like, it's that comfort of being able to be in someone's presence and tell it. And I, I'm, I suppose because <laughs> I'm, I'm so out there with the mental health thing. Like yeah. if you listen to the first episode of the, of, of the very first episode of the podcast, everything is in it. And now it's at the point where people just know that I will just tell them what's happening. And that's, you know, the way it is. But of course, there's only two or three people. I'm not going to burden everyone with with it. But uh, and like I'm not in therapy at the moment, but I did go for a top up there last year, like a few a few uh, sessions that were very uh, rewarding because it was to do with like OCD and and you know stuff that was stuff that's out here like it's OCD in your yeah. in your room is like is one thing you know organizing stuff all around you that's one outside thing outside in the real world is well, a different ball game. I was doing it right Kellyanne I was doing it in in the gym so I'm coaching a class and people need chalk on their hands for, it's CrossFit so people are yeah. you know t- and I'm getting annoyed by every single speck of d- dust or chalk that's Falling. coming down the ground yeah. and I and this was like I knew at that point right this is getting outrageous now like this you yeah. know you, you can't go around with this kind of uh, kind of frustration and anger in your chest about things that have to happen in a gym, like yeah. it's yeah, and and not your your house or something. It's not the same thing. So yeah, again, I knew, yeah. yeah, I knew that the like the answer or at least how we could break it down wasn't going to be through a friend. It was it had to come through a a professional. But it comes through a professional. But isn't it fantastic? Because there's one thing like I'll say to my friends, like we're like an engine you just need certain tools mm-hmm. to to fix you to get to you where you need to go and everyone has the tools to help fix themselves you just need to know which tool is needed for which yeah. situation and we have it and that's where the help of a certain conversation with a certain friend might be that tool to help you or like that you have the friend that you just vent to they say nothing and that's something that will mm-hmm. help you or you have a technique a, a, a mantra or whatever it is that helps or your therapist helps you and you kind of use those tools in the situation where that is being triggered yeah. like okay right now is when I need to do this and this is this I, this has got me out of it before it will get me out of yeah. it again and you kind of you kind of get into that mindset but it's so difficult when you're first learning oh my yeah. god how am I letting this take over my noggin right now it's so ridiculous like why am I letting this happen <laughs> yeah it's it is like and like where did it come from and and I think that what now 
the, the great thing about it now is that everybody knows the joke about the chalk. So every time someone takes out the box of chalk, they're like, oh, kind of a thing, you know. Uh, and they're like, oh, That's look. That's my approach. That to me. I'm yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> and then they're like, oh, look, Derek, there's a bit of chalk. Down there. They spell, and I'm more comfortable with it now. It's not exactly. as big of a deal. Bring humor. Bring yeah. humor and make it as silly as it needs to be. But exactly. also, you know, you do have to empathize and understand that the OCD is something. And, mm. you know, there are triggers that you're going to get with it. So be gentle as well. Yeah, yeah. Don't go overboard. Don't just don't dump, go overboard. <laughs> dump the chalk all over the ground or something. But oh, my God, no, don't. That'd be, that'd be tough now. But uh, so, Kelly, and I suppose we've kind of covered this already. But like, if you if you if there's stuff, stuff that you haven't brought up yet, like what do you like to do in your spare time? Walk my dogs, go yeah. on hikes, have a coffee. Um, I love nature. I love being in nature. So I will find a new hiking spot or I'll, I'll arrange that coffee with my friend or I'll go out with my dog, Bailey, and I have a great home, Sam, as well. Um, or I'll read, like I'll read mm. books um, and sit down with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and I'll read a book and just switch off. Totally, totally sweet. I put my phone away. I am mad for editing. I'm mad for, you know, oh, I can create this video in this hour. I'm like, yeah. no, you take this time off and you you switch off. <laughs> and why why Hans Zimmer? How did how did the Hans Zimmer thing kind of start? <laughs> love him so much. I've always loved him. I just love, I love the production. I love the mm. orchestra. I love his humor. I'm so happy whoever is behind his social media. Thank God they've got him on TikTok now. Woohoo. Um, it's giving for me. Um, but I've always, you know, you, I wasn't aware of how much he has done. Mm. And once I'm a movie nerd and I love music, I love editing, I love the production, I love the directors. Like I will talk hours and hours and hours about movies if I could. So when I discovered, you know, Hans Zimmer was actually the the man, the music behind one mm. of my favorite movies, I like lost my physical life. Um and I was like, this man is amazing. But it's Hans Zimmer and um Oh my god, I have him on repeat all the time. Your man who does the music for Titanic. Um oh, James, brain, but it, James Horner. James Horner. Yeah. Hey, hey. If them two, you know, made a baby, <laughs> I'd be so happy. Um, but like that's my thing. Like I just I yeah. just I love it so much. And I'm listening, I'm what listening to the movie and the dialogue, of course, but I'm listening to the music in the mm. background because it creates an atmosphere and I bloody love it. <laughs> uh, that, do you know what's weird about that? Because literally before we started recording, I was watching a film. And the heiress, the heiress, I never forget. Yeah, that. yeah. From from a long time ago. But what Anna, I'm going to have to go and explore it because there's a there's a bit of music in it that is very reminiscent of an Elvis song. And I'm kind of thinking, did he take that from that film? And I don't know if he did or not. Deep dive. Deep dive. A deep dive and right now. The funny thing is, Kellyanne, <laughs> like we, we mentioned the Beatles and we mentioned films, two things I'm a big nerd about. And we could have discussed all that as well. But people are sick of listening to me here, that are hearing me talk about the, the Beatles and, and films. Separate, yeah, let's, Part let's two do is that. Beatles. Yes. <laughs> Part two down the line, coming soon. But um, Kellyanne, you've been uh, a, a fabulous guest. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It's so much fun talking everything with you. It's a fabulous podcast. Fair bloody play. I'm ah, glad but... something like this exists. It's great. Thank needed. you very much. It is needed. needed yeah. Um, Kellyanne, stick with me for one minute. Um, I'll I'll close it out and we'll get a photo together if that's all right. Absolutely. I'm gonna Thank you very in. much. We did I the also time. Need... My back, you just came up there. It's like low battery. You're talking too much. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's good time. And that was. Um, thank you very much, by the way, to John. For all his tech stuff, uh, I always thank my mum, my dad, my granddad, Jaron Calvin. Everybody knows why. Um, oh, we're on YouTube. Uh, subscribe if you would. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Oh, by the way, go follow Callianne as well. Callianne Brennan. That's go it. follow. Yes, and the Tri Channel too. Of and course. the Tri Channel. Uh, and we're all like we're on Spotify, Apple Anchor, Google Podcasts, all those other stuff. Uh, thanks everyone for for watching and for for listening. And again, Callianne, thank you very much. I'm over the moon. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor. You're welcome. Uh, everybody else, see you next week. Bye.